What's up, Well That's Good fam? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, a sweet friend of mine, and probably someone that most of you look up to. So I'm excited to just have her on the podcast and get to talk because we have been through some similar situations lately. We both just had beautiful baby girls who I hope are best friends one day. And so without further ado, welcome to the podcast, Don Cherie Wilkerson. Sadie, I'm so glad to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we got two baby girls. We're growing our family. I know. We're girl moms. How fun is that? I I never thought I would. I I don't know. I have five brothers. I didn't process having a girl. So I've had two boys. Now I've got a girl and it's a whole new world. Everything is pink right now. A whole new world. Tell everyone your kids' names because I think it is just the cutest. It's, It's like almost hard to say, but it's the cutest thing ever. Thank you. It's really confusing, but to back it up a little bit, I come from a pretty confusing uh, name line in my family. There's <laughs> six kids. My mom gave birth to six kids. Our last name was Duran, and my, our siblings' names were Destiny, Don, Cherie, Denny, Des, David, D, and Dakota. Oh so so we awesome. decided with the W's for Wilkerson to just keep it going. So my first baby boy, his name's Wyatt Wesley Wilkerson. And he's three years old. And then I have a one-year-old, about to be two. His name is Wild, Wesley Wilkerson, and he is wild. And then this baby girl, her name is Waylon Wesley Wilkerson. And uh, named after none other than, I don't know another Waylon. So Waylon Jennings it is. Wow, I love that. I was going to ask, where did Waylon come from? But that's awesome. I love their names. And I love how it's www. Me and Christian were like, they should start like a www.www family like blog or something. <laughs> like It's just For like the Destin. the worldwide web family. It's like <laughs> www initials everywhere. It's literally it's Destin for greatness. I love it. I think it's so sweet. <laughs> They are the cutest. Um, I have to say, uh, Christian's already planning Honey's future, and he literally showed Honey pictures of Wyatt and Wild, and was like, "So these boys Please. are pretty cute." <laughs> we yeah, gotta keep these so Louisiana fun. kids like falling in love. That's I right, love Honey. How's she She's doing? Is she good? She's awesome. She's doing so great. She is. Um, fully recovered from her sickness and she is wild you would think we named her wild she's crazy she is so much fun the nurse has called her wild woman so uh she's just <laughs> awesome and doing great but i can't wait for our girls to meet it's gonna be so fun well obviously we can talk about so many things but first we have to go with the question that i ask everyone on the world let's go podcast what is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given I love this question. I think there's a lot of pieces of advice that my parents have given me over the years that I can say is like the best because I I just, they're my heroes. But I think my mom has always been really big on starting your day with God's word, Mm. Um, not reading the news, making first things first so that Mm. his promises are just the first thing that inspire and start your day. I, I don't always get it right. But it's something that I'm always going for because I, I think it just sets the tone for your day in a completely different way. Mm-hmm. And I, I do want the first thing on my heart and in my mind when mm-hmm. I open up my eyes to be the faithfulness of God, His promises, and His Word always does that. It just like reframes your whole day. Yes, that's so good. I love that. Um, Shelly Giglio always says the same thing. And it's so cool because so many people look up to you and look up to Shelly. And, you know, I think people will say like, oh, I wish I could be more like her. I wish I could be more more like that person, but you both start with the word. And I know that that probably has to do with how you guys are in real life, how you keep a joyful spirit or how you keep, you know, your head on straight in a crazy world. And so that's really cool to hear. I've been trying and challenging myself to that. This morning I woke up and I immediately wanted to get on Instagram and like, I literally was like, nope. And I scrolled over to the Bible app. I was like, no, I need to, you know, soak on God's promises because I do I know, actually. Right? I need the Bible app to like automatically open for me oh, every morning. Maybe that they would need help to. Me s- so I don't go to anything else. They need to set that. I mean, there's so many things that like, you can program. You need to program like as soon as I wake up and I press slide, it needs to just be on the Bible app. Um, but no, it really does make a difference in your day. So I love that. Um, okay, so I want to ask you, so, so many people look up to you and Rich. Christian and I are some of those people. Um, honestly, I remember when Christian and I first met, it was just funny because he did not get starstruck or anything. He was always just like really cool about everything. But the one thing he did say, he was like, Sadie, like, 
you know Rich Wilkerson Jr. I was like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's the coolest guy ever. And so <laughs> Christian loves y'all, always has. And for good reason, y'all are just a great example. But how did y'all meet? Take us back to we the start. We think y'all are the coolest guys ever. Y'all are the coolest. <laughs> I just love any time I get to spend with you. And <laughs> celebrating your wedding was a forever memory. It was the, the best. The two of you together. I mean, you're already creating such a special legacy. Thank um, you. But the, we met, let's see, the, the question is, how did we meet? Yeah, take us back. We met 20 years ago, girlfriend. I, wow. I can't even say that. I mean, it makes me, I can't believe how the time has passed, but almost 20 years ago in January, it'll be 20 years. Wow. And uh, we met in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I was singing then in Nashville. Mm. I grew up in Louisiana. That's where all my family still lives. And um, I was going back and forth, 16 years old, 17 years old from Louisiana to Nashville and singing and working on music. And his brother was on the same label that I was on. And his brother was in town that week. Rich came in to visit his brother for one day and we hung out. We were at a concert and then we went to Subway and we went thrifting at Goodwill together. And what a great off. start. I didn't, think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I would ever see him again. And he actually got my number from a friend and just started calling me. And I'll never forget. Well, first of all, I'll never forget coming home from the studio. It was in the day when you didn't take your cell phone with you every day. So I left it. Um, in my bedroom. And when I came home from the studio in Nashville the next night after Rich had left town, um, I had like 30 plus missed calls from this number. Wow. And I was like, this guy is crazy. But what had (laughs) happened was his older brother was being a punk and saw that he had called me and actually picked up his phone and just older brother to a T. Oh, that's hilarious. Over and over again. And um, so he looked crazy when I called him. He only called me one time. (laughs) <laughs> but I'll never forget that first combo because even at 17 years old, like Jesus had just radically transformed his life. Wow. And it just, his Jesus story just like poured out of his heart. We ended up talking like two or three hours that first night. Wow. And he was just telling me about how a month before on the other side of the world, he was with his dad at a conference and God just repped him and, and really mm-hmm. revealed to him, like, stop, like, doing your own thing, partying, like, mm-hmm. hanging out with people that are not speaking life over you. Yeah. Like, you have a call on your life. And he had felt that call when he was, like, 12 wow. years old, but really walked away from it. And and him being so in love with Jesus was probably one of the most attractive things ever. And uh, we were long distance for a year and a half. Then we dated for a total of, like, four and a half years and then got wow. married. That's amazing. That's so cool. I'd never heard that story before. It's actually really yeah. similar to Christian and I. He had kind of been living Is a it? more wild life. And then we were long yeah. distance and I was living in Nashville. And it was just, he did the same thing. He didn't call me 30 times, although that would be something he would actually do. Because <laughs> if I don't answer, he will keep calling. Um, but he was so intentional about calling me when he, we would have like hour, hours long of conversations. And so it just is so cool. If you have a small business out there, I have something that's going to save you time and money. It is stamps.com. It is absolutely incredible. If you have to go to the post office a lot and you're tired of going to the post office, tired of making those trips, this is going to be a great option for you. Stamps is something that my parents' business, Duck Commander, and also mine, Live Original, has used. It's just a very convenient service for us. Since 1998, stamps.com has been an indispensable tool for nearly 1 million businesses. So it's very well known. It has you know some roots some things that we can go off of since outcome brings the services of the u.s postal service and ups shipping right to your computer so whether you're in an office sending invoices a side hustle like an etsy shop or a full-blown warehouse shipping you can use stamps.com and it can make your life a whole lot easier all you need is a computer and a standard printer no special supplies or equipment needed and within minutes you're up and you're running and you can send any letter any packaging anywhere you want to send it and you'll get exclusive discounts and post 
postage and shipping from USPS and UPS. Once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup and drop it off. No traffic and no lines. It's really just that simple. Stamps.com also has a new rate advisor tool where you can compare shipping rates and timelines to find the best options for you. So save time and money today by going to stamps.com. There's no risk involved. And with my promo code WO, you can get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage at a digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in WO. That's stamps.com, promo code WO, stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Okay, so in the world that we live in today, it is like dating is so complicated. And I think dating maybe has always been complicated, but it's so complicated now. And um, one major thing that I think is the problem is people just are so hesitant to commit. And so for you and Rich, like, you know, going back 20 years, what did that look like to commit to one another? And how do you, you know, what advice would you give to people nowadays who are dating um, to just like commit when you know it's someone that is worth committing to? Yeah, I think commitment is something that really is missing from our generation. I think commitment to the call of God on our life, commitment to That's pursue right. the right person to walk alongside, commitment to the house of God. Like mm-hmm. commitment is lacking kind of in every facet. Mm-hmm. But I think when it comes to dating specifically, I just think that, yes, we all go through seasons where we're asking God, is this your will? We put it on the altar before you like, do you, do you want me to be with this person, God? Mm-hmm. Is this the right person? I don't have to know if I'm going to marry him today. But like, do I continue in yeah. this direction? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that it's important for both people to be willing to do that. It's good. But that said, you know, surrendering the trust journey to God and not having to know all the answers. All that said, I do think it's really important to know your value. I think it's really important to mm-hmm. know that whoever you're with they should want to be with you and they should be committed. And you may not be in a place where you may only be three months in, six months in, and you shouldn't have the expectation that they know they want to marry you. You're just getting to know each other. I think it takes, you know, a while to get to know somebody. So everybody's a little bit different. And while you you can't expect that kind of commitment immediately always, um, I think that you should expect and know your value that the person that is with you should be with you. They should be committed in their words. They should be committed in their loyalty and their faithfulness to you. Not not like doing a million other things, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's like, no, if if we're going to be committed to each other, we're going to really going to walk this out in yeah. honesty and yeah. um, transparency. And Love I think it. that makes a big difference. I think culture says otherwise, that you don't have to take relationships seriously, that mm-hmm. you don't have to be committed. But I yes. just think there's power and commitment. Yes. I think there's blessing and commitment that if I'm here, I put my full weight down. Yep. And if I need to move on and if we need to go our separate ways in dating, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not yep. going to, you know, I'm going to be honest so that we can both um, walk forward in strength. I, I yeah. think that honesty brings a lot of strength to your commitment. Yeah, that's so good. Oh, I love it. I think, you know, that's probably part of the problem, too, is that people are so quick to, like, ghost someone. And so there's this, like, fear of even getting close because you're like, well, what if they just leave? What if they ditch? And I think, you know, commitment. I love how you made commitment so much broader than just dating. It's like we need to live committed lifestyles, like committed to the Lord, committed to our church, committed to, you know, what the call that God has on our life, committed to if we're going to be in a relationship. So I love that. It's more of like a mindset than just, you know, a little cute phrase that we're, we're trying to do while we're dating. It's actually like a really, really powerful is. thing. And we all go through tough times and commitment is really only seen when you go through tough times. Yeah. And so I love the way that Levi Lesko says it. He says, choose somebody to marry that you want to suffer with. Because we all go through difficult seasons. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes when work gets hard or when when relationships get hard or when serving in church Mm -hmm. gets hard, we just jump ship and we're out of here. But really, you know, it's in the struggle when who you are in Christ and what you know about the God that you serve is really revealed when you're in the challenge. That's when your commitment is really seen. Yeah. That's so good. I love it. I remember Christian and I were reading A Mingling of Souls by Matt Chandler, and he says, you know, you're going to argue with someone. So do you want it to be the person you're dating? You know, it was like, he was like, I knew I was going to argue with someone. And I was like, Lauren is who I'm going (laughs) to argue with. And so it's so true. And we looked at each other reading. I was like, 
yeah, okay, I'll argue with you. I'll, I'll choose you. You know, you're going to go through it with anyone. So you got to choose yeah. who you're going to commit to. I love one thing about you and Rich's relationship that I think is really powerful that you can see is that y'all are so supportive of each other. Like you'll see you going and doing your thing and you'll see him going and doing his thing. And y'all aren't always together, but you always feel together. Like you'll see Rich here and you Thank there, you. but like your relationship is so strong. How do you get to the point where you're cheering your spouse on or, you know, even your friends on and not envying them for them getting to do the things that they're, you know, called to do? Oh, celebration is so key to really life-giving relationships. If you mm-hmm. can't celebrate others, I don't think you'll ever have uh, the depth of relationship that God yep. intended for you to walk in. And I love that you hit on that because celebrating friendships and celebrating your spouse, both of those are key. I mm-hmm. think relationship is one of the greatest joys of life. Yep. God didn't place us on this earth by ourselves. But I think because of things like social media mm-hmm. or even just our own sinful nature, like yep. we can start comparing, we can start looking at what other people have, and maybe they got what we wanted a little bit before we got it. Or yeah. maybe they're further down the road, whatever that means, um, than we are. And we can start to um, be sparse with our words, Mm -hmm. feeling like for us to validate the season they're in somehow diminishes the season that we ourselves are in. But I've learned that celebration, there's freedom and celebration that if you feel even like a tinge of jealousy, if you feel even a bit of comparison, that's the moment to, to step in and to encourage them to celebrate Mm -hmm. them and shake that junk off of you because that stuff, it it limits your life. It doesn't limit them. It makes you small. When we live in jealousy, when we live even feeling like we shouldn't speak words of life over mm-hmm. others, we really live in a smaller world than God intended us to live in. Because when you yeah. get to celebrate people, man, it makes your life so much bigger because all of a sudden someone else's win becomes your win. Yes. And so there's a lot more things to party and celebrate and to thank God for and let that celebration yeah. like roll up in thanks and honor to God. So when mm-hmm. it comes specifically to my relationship, relationship with Rich. Yeah, we've been through a lot of seasons. We've had tons of challenges, like you said, like mm-hmm. any relationship does. But one thing we're really committed to is is um, trusting one another and wanting God's best for each other. And I want to yeah. live in a marriage that is constantly giving me room to grow into who God's called me to be. And I feel a real conviction in my heart to constantly give Rich space to grow into who God's called him to be. You know, we, we haven't finished growing until we're in heaven, you know, Mm -hmm. we're going to still be growing. And sometimes Mm -hmm. in relationships, you like want people to change, but the minute they actually do change, you kind of get upset. Like, Oh, well you can't, you can't agree with me now. I've been saying that all along. Well, why don't we actually celebrate it and thank God that it's an answer prayer. We got to make room for people to grow and to change. And that creates like a real flourishing atmosphere for all of us. That's the kind of relationship I want to be in. Yeah, come on. That's so good. I love that. I remember, um, I I guess it was about two years ago, we were doing, you know how everybody picks a word for the year? And everyone was like picking these great yeah. words and like they were like really like challenging words. And I was like praying about my word and I really felt like God kind of laid on my heart to choose the word celebrate. And so I was like, okay, yeah, celebrate's gonna be my word. And I didn't really know what that, the context of that meant, but I just chose it. And everyone was kind of laughing at me because they were like, celebrate, like that's, that doesn't really sound like a very like spiritual word. But I realized throughout the year that it really actually challenged me in my faith so much because you're right. When you don't celebrate people, your world really, like you're small. But when you celebrate people, like, when you celebrate people as if everybody, you know, responding to the call of God is a win for the kingdom. So it's a win for you. Like that really does change your mindset and change the way you live. It makes you so much more joyful, so much more happy for people, have so much better friendships, so much better relationships. And it really is a challenge I think everyone should take to celebrate people greater. And I think some people think, well, is it, you know, am I being really genuine if I say to her, I'm so happy for you and I'm a little jealous. I think it's not, I think it is genuine. I think it's telling your heart to rise above. I think it's, you know, know, you know, telling your heart to align with the truth of God's word that you're going to cheer on your sister. I don't think it's disingenuous. I think it's calling yeah. yourself to be better. You know, I think the enemy would love for you to feel like a hypocrite for doing the right thing when in reality, you're just responding to God. You're responding to conviction. 
Hey friends, I want to tell y'all about Liberty University. If you've never heard of Liberty University, well, go Flames. Liberty is amazing. Our family is very familiar with Liberty. We love Liberty. My brothers have both gone there. My sister-in-law, I actually took a semester there. My sister is currently enrolled online. So we love Liberty. We're there training champions for Christ. Um, that is their mission and they are a world-class Bible-based education. Um, that is the foundation of what they do. And so it is an incredible place, like I mentioned. It is an online school but also an in-person school half of our family has done online and half have done in person let me tell you a little bit about their online program they have more than 450 online degrees from associate level to doctorate level they have classes most classes that are actually a hundred percent online so you can do it from anywhere in the country tuition rates are at the bottom third of leading online university all courses are also taught from a biblical perspective so if you're looking to deepen your relationship with God you can do that even through going to school and they're also ranked in the top 1% out of 2,100 online colleges and universities for academic quality, affordability, and accessibility by bestcolleges.com. I'm telling you, I did a semester there online and I loved it. It was just a great way um, to even, you know, do school with a very busy schedule. They go by eight week periods and they make it pretty easy for you, wherever your lifestyle, whatever your lifestyle is like. Also, if you're looking for a um, a school to actually attend in person. It is a great option. Like I said, my brother is currently there. They have more than 300 undergrad and graduate degrees. They also have a 7,000 plus acre campus that is absolutely beautiful. I've been there several times. They have students that represent all 50 states and over 70 countries. So it's just a great place for anyone to join. You can start your future now by going to liberty.edu slash Sadie. And because you're a Whoa That's Good listener, you'll also get your application fee waived. So that is pretty awesome. I'm so excited to get to give you that. So friends, don't wait. Go to liberty.edu slash Sadie now and get started on your future. I love your um, what you were saying about like growing into all that God has called you to be and how like you and Rich are still growing, which I think is so cool because people would look at you and Rich and be like, how are y'all still growing? Like y'all have like a church and you are like doing all these amazing things. But, but I do think people think that. I think people get a little bit yeah. narrow minded and think that like, oh, if that person is doing this and they've made it. And I hear like specifically college students talk about a lot. Like I'm so panicked. Like what does God have for me? Like what is my next year going to look like? And I always just tell him like, just rest. And like, what is he doing in you right now? And he's just going to continue to do it. Just keep saying yes. Because if you try to envision the future, like you're not even going to be able to hit what he's going to do. And so like, what advice do you give to people who are like so freaking out about the future and are almost limiting God to as if God only has like one specific thing for them and they have to like somehow magically just find it. You are speaking my language because I feel so passionate about this. I think that especially 20 somethings, they give up on the God orchestrated once in all of history path that was created Mm -hmm. before their life began because they think it's got to look like that person's path or like that person's path. Mm -hmm. And so suddenly they start to look at their path and they don't value it anymore. They don't value the job that God gave them. So they don't show up with joy or maybe they walk away from it to go get something else. When God was crafting something beautiful and unique within them at that job, they don't value Mm -hmm. serving because it's not in the right position that that they see themselves down the road serving. But what I learned is that in my 20s, I served in so many different capacities. And so many of them didn't make sense or align with what I was passionate about or what I was good at. But God is shaping something in me in every season, whether it's a position that I chose, whether Mm -hmm. it's something that I wanted to be placed in my hand Mm -hmm. or whether it's something that I never wanted to be placed in my hand, but God himself put it there. And I think that God's just looking for people to be faithful. You know, we get so wrapped up in like, what are our gifts? What am I called to do? Well, if you're 20, if you're 19 and you're listening, God's called you to be faithful. God's called you not to give up and to Mm -hmm. trust his timeline. Don't call things small. You don't know Mm -hmm. what the small things are. 
You don't know what the big things are. I think in the kingdom of heaven, you know, the things that we value here on the earth, it's often upside down. So I I think the little things that we call little here are actually the big things, the attitude that we steward and our spirit, you know, like um, when we show up on time for things that God's entrusted to us, when when we carry the joy of the Lord, when we honor people around us, when Mm -hmm. we complete what we start, when we make a commitment and we see it through. I think all of those yep. things are things that sometimes we can make excuses for because, oh, it doesn't align with what I'm passionate about or it's not really my life calling. But our life calling is to be faithful, to love Jesus yep. and to love people. And God will work out the rest. So I would say take the pressure off yourself. I, I remember having those nights where tears would stream down my face and I would feel like, oh, what am I called to do? Mm-hmm. What I've learned on my journey is, I'm called to this moment to steward it, to be faithful, to be present and grounded and to lean Mm -hmm. into the voice of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus himself said, don't worry about tomorrow. So I got to stay here. Yes. Come on. That's so good. So many people need to rewind and listen to that past five minutes over again. Like we're called to be faithful. We're called to love God and love people. And the beauty of that is there's no anxiety in that. You just show up and say yes. Like there's this phrase now um, that I've been learning about and it's called purpose anxiety. And it's like our new phrase for our generation where it's like the idea of your purpose gives you so much anxiety because you either don't know what it is you either don't know how to fulfill it or whatever that is that looks like and that's like actually a very common thing like a very a lot of like secular um articles have been coming out about purpose anxiety and how to deal with it and i'm like man that is so crazy that the enemy would just make us get so freaked out about our purpose that we have anxiety over it and don't feel like we can live up to it when our purpose and our call is actually simple like be faithful love god love people and the spirit will lead you you know into each day into what comes and I had a conversation with a friend the other day and she's just an incredible person. She's in college. She just did something uh, really successful in the midst of college. And the day after the successful moment, I was having a conversation. So how'd it go, everything? And she started crying and she was like, I'm just so freaked out about like, you know, what I'm going to do next. Like, I don't know what's next. And everyone keeps asking me what's next. And I was like, friend, you don't have to know what's next. Like, you just did this yeah. amazing thing and you're in college. Like, just keep studying, keep doing your thing, like keep showing up and God will lead you, you know, like it'll, it'll come. And I told her, I was like, if somebody would have asked me yes. what's next three years ago, I could have tried to answer, but I would have never guessed. First of all, I was just meeting Christian. I would have never thought, you know, we would have stepped into getting married and have a daughter. I would never thought I would go on to write more books or do any of that, but it just came by daily yeses and walking and trusting the the Lord. And so I love what you said. I love that. I think that is going to just influence so many people. Um, one thing you mentioned is that, you know, doing the things well, like showing up on time, honoring people. And one thing I know about Vu Church is y'all honor people so well. I'll never forget going to Vu and I was like, the culture here is amazing. Like I am not a city person, but I was like, shoot, should I like move to Miami? Like (laughs) it was just like so awesome. I was like, this place is amazing. Like you honor people well. Y'all had dance parties in your courtyard going. You are like everyone like hung out at the houses later. It was just such a fun culture. And I know you and Rich lead that. And you know, there is something to say about the leader setting the tone of the culture. And I think so many people, you know, get into this place of like, I don't have good friends. We don't have a good culture. We don't have a good community. How would you encourage someone to, you know, maybe build that if they don't have that right now? Yeah, I would say be the friend that you want. Yeah, you know, I would good. say start where you are and, and decide good. to be a part of community. There are so many reasons not to be a part of community because mm-hmm. you get hurt, um, because it takes investment. It takes time. There is a sacrifice for you to have genuine relationship because it takes time. It takes your emotional investment. It takes um, it takes a lot of a lot of your life to to have thriving relationships, but it's worth it. Yep. And so I would say just start where you are. Like a lot of people look and they go, oh, how do you create a healthy culture? It starts by leading yourself. That's so good. be the friend that you want to be. 
And I mm-hmm. think a lot of times we keep our eyes on, oh, I want to be their friend, but they're not responding to yep. me the way that I would like for them to be. They're not available mm-hmm. for the coffee or they're not, they're too busy for this. And I'd say, there's so many people around you. It's good. And you are someone's answer to prayer. Wow. Start to reach out. Start it's to good. invite people. Start to create relationship that's centered around Jesus. And it's and good. you're going to have friends that know Jesus. And then you're going to have friends that have never had a personal relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. And God's placed you in their life mm-hmm. to be a light. You know, yeah. your life really is a letter. You know, the, mm-hmm. the world may never pick up the Bible, but they can read your life just like a letter. Mm-hmm. And that letter can testify of the the joy of God, of his peace, mm-hmm. when the world is so lacking in peace, like you said, purpose, yep. anxiety, everybody's mm-hmm. feeling it. And so yep. I'd say like, steward, steward yourself. It's, it's hard to lead others when you haven't first decided to lead yourself. Because let me tell you, I'll wow. just be the first to say, it's way harder to lead yourself than it is to lead others. That is the so start to keep most true commitments thing. to yourself. If yep. you make a commitment to yourself, keep it. If you're pursuing more of a relationship with Jesus, really do it. We get uh, caught up in all the things we want to do, but more than anything, I want to know Jesus. And as we know Mm -hmm. Jesus, we know what who Jesus loves. Jesus loves people. So as we seek Jesus, He's going to lead us to people that desperately need Him and and need you, whoever's listening or watching. They need you in their life because you're going to be that Jesus that they need. Friends, I know we are just now getting into the pumpkin spice latte season, but Christmas is right around the corner and I am so excited about it. One thing that I'm looking forward to in Christmas is just all of the different Advent Bible studies that come out. They're always amazing ones, but I want to tell y'all about She Reads Truth. This season, I want to encourage you to prepare your heart for Christmas Day in a fresh way by reading with She Reads Truth community for their 10th Advent Bible study. Listen to this. From creation to the incarnation to the coming eternal city. Scripture speaks of Jesus' life-giving presence and light in a dark world. This year, She Reads Truth Advent Study is called The Everlasting Light. This five-week study book features daily scripture readings that traces this theme throughout the Bible. If you've ever participated in a Bible study with She Reads Truth, then you know that they have great quality. They're an amazing organization. Y'all know how much the Bible means to me, and She Reads Truth just does a great job painting the picture of the Bible. They also include a helpful extra to make understanding the Bible a little bit easier and some crafts and recipes to sprinkle in a little fun with it. So head to shopshereadtruth.com right now to get your study book with promo code WOE. They sell out every year, so don't wait. Use the code WOE, W-H-O-A, WOE at checkout for 15% off your Advent order. Head to shopshereadtruth.com right now. I um, personally have been trying to live that out myself, trying to lead myself because you're so right. I, you know, encourage everyone to be a good sister and a friend. And I literally have an app that builds community for sisterhood. And yet, like, sometimes that is the hardest thing for me. Like, I just moved back to Louis. I just moved back to Louisiana, you know, um, in the last year and we had honey and things have been crazy and we've been living in a pandemic. And I kind of just realized, I'm like, you know what? Like I have all my friends in Franklin that I love so much. And that's like where my community is. And I'm a family here, but I haven't really tried to make friendship. And like, I really want that. I really desire that. And so I was like, okay. And so I started like texting people. And over the past year, I've gotten to become really good with friends with this one girl well it'll be funny if she listens to this she'll be like I'm kind of exposing myself but I do think this is good for people to hear because I think sometimes people look at me and they would assume I have friends because I have followers but that's not the same thing and just because you have a following or just because you have online people you still need your people locally you still need the friend you can call and you know they'll pick up the phone or go to the coffee shop with. So yeah, she's going to laugh when she hears this because I've, you know, been her friend. Well, she leads like one of the, you know, big life groups here. And I've kind of just been like waiting for her to invite me and Christian to join. But we have been friends for like a year and it has just never happened. And I'm like, man, like if I could just get in that life group, like I think I could really build a community like that would just be so great. So for the past year, I've just watched like this community group just like thrive and grow. And I've just been like, like waiting for the invite. So finally this week I was like, hey friend, um, look, 
is your life group like open to the public? Like, can me and Christian join or is it like exclusive? She's like, oh my gosh, like, yes, y'all can join. She's like, people join every week. I would love for you to join. She's like, I honestly just didn't know if you would want to come. And I was like, yes, like me and Christian need that. Like we need community here that like, you That's know, just great. friends our age that we can hang with that have kids and whatnot. And she was just absolutely shocked that I had been wanting to come. She didn't even like think about that. And it was just so easy and so simple. And here I am, I've waited a year of my life to get an invite when all I had to do was ask. And so I love your advice. And sometimes you do have to lead yourself and like, don't just like wait for the invite. Sometimes like you have to be the one to ask or you have to be the one to invite them into your life um, or to your your group. You start the group, whatever that looks like. And so I just had a lesson in that because that just happened this week and that has been like a year in the making. And so I love that you said that. It's actually so good though. Yeah. Like that's that story that you just told it's gonna help so many people because I know all of us like we have that uh, tendency to sit on the wall and then when we go for it we're like surprised that there's a wide open door but I think that your story yeah. is so encouraging because we all find ourselves doing that and that year yep. you waited it won't be wasted because somebody else that's listens true. right now or watching like they're going to, they're going to take the step this week. And I, I love how honestly you share your journey, Sadie, like you're anointed for it. And, and your story holds power and brings freedom to so many people that you and Christian mm-hmm. together, like God, God just has beautiful things in front of you, but thank you wow. for walking so vulnerably and openly because we all can mm-hmm. relate and we all need friendships. Rich and I lead a small group. And uh, we call them crews here at VU, which is the name of our church, VU Miami. Um, But we lead a small group and our small group, it ministers to my heart. And Rich and I often say, Mm. like, we don't just lead a community. We participate in the community that we lead Mm. because all of us desperately need relationship. And I've watched people sell themselves a lie, you know, in the new mom season or in the newlywed season or in the just going to college Mm. season or in the getting a new job season or in the I just Mm -hmm. moved season that says I don't have time for community right now because the enemy Mm. wants to isolate us because he knows that there is so much waiting for us in community. We're sharpened. We're encouraged. Our tank is filled up as we gather with others who speak faith and share gratitudes and mm-hmm. and share needs that we can pray for others, not just ourselves. Yeah. It's beautiful. And so, yeah, I, I can totally relate with that story you told. It's good. Thanks for sharing that. I, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's one of those things where even in the past year, that I didn't have, you know, that community group or that friend, you know, group necessarily that I've had in the past. It was really a sweet year because I feel like me and Christian created like a bond that we have never experienced before and we've become so close. And so I do think, you know, for the person struggling to find that community, if it's not there yet, this time is not wasted. You know, you can look up and see who's in your life right now. I, I even remember whenever I was in high school and really struggling finding solid friendships, it was in the midst of like, Dancing with the Stars and just a really crazy time in my life. That's whenever I got so close with my family. And like that time with my family has created a foundation that, you know, for the rest of my life, I know I can call my brother, my mom, and they're going to be there for me. And so don't look at it as wasted time and really invest in the people in your life right now before, you know, you have that community. Um, Because you do have a community in a sense. It might not be what you're looking for and what, you know, you put on paper, but those people matter and those people are the ones that love you and they're walking with you. And so invest in them just as you will when you have that group. So I love what you said. That's so cool to hear from y'all as well. Um, I want to ask you about something that I know y'all walked through um, that you've been open about. And honestly, friends that I've had that have walked through this, I've always pointed them to your page um, just as a resource because you trust in God so beautifully. And I know it was a hard, hard season to walk through but I know you and Rich walked through infertility and it was really hard for y'all to get pregnant and now you have three beautiful babies who you've shared their names Wyatt Wild and Waylon with us and um, it's just a miracle <laughs> it's just a miracle story www.miracle um, but I want to hear 
I want to hear about the, the journey in a sense. You don't have to share details, but I just want some encouragement for people who are walking through that or any season of just waiting and believing for something that's not there yet. How did you trust God and see God through the journey of waiting and through the miracle and all the things? Absolutely. Infertility is a big part of my story. And I think when it comes to finding our purpose, a lot of times um, the reason why we can't just like make a straight beeline towards what God has for us is because he hasn't revealed it yet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times our purpose is revealed not just in the wins, but in the struggles of our life. I think that the broken areas of our life are the ones that he uses the most. And none of us want to hear that when we're starting out on our faith journey, that it's Mm -hmm. the broken areas of our life. But infertility has been a big part of my faith journey. When I was 25, um, my doctor, I had gone to the doctor because I wanted to start a family. Rich and I had been married for four years. Thought This is a good time. We're 25. We've been married for several years now. And I'll never forget my doctor handing me a card of an infertility specialist and saying, hey, your blood test came back irregular you need to make an appointment and um, you're going to need help uh, conceiving. And that started an eight year journey of infertility. And when we talk about community and the story that you just shared about waiting a year to reach out, the reason why that story so connects with me is because I've been there and you're absolutely right. It's not a wasted season. Because mm-hmm. God does so much in us um, on from the inside out. And mm-hmm. for me, I was so uh, uncomfortable with the idea mm-hmm. that I was having trouble having a child. I'm one of, my mom gave birth to six kids. There's seven kids in my family. And so wow. it's like, what? I'm not going to have any trouble. My mom <laughs> never had trouble. Are you kidding me? You have the wrong person. Like there's no way. <laughs> I didn't even tell my parents for the first year. And my parents are like my best friends. And I just felt like, you know what? I'll be able to get through this by myself. I can handle it. I went to the doctor's appointments and and sat down, had all the tests run and did all this stuff. And about a year in realized, okay, DC, this isn't just something that you can pick up the pieces and heal and walk forward without anybody knowing that it was ever a struggle. And maybe Mm -hmm. that's not God's plan after all. You know, I think when we face hardship, sometimes it's like, well, let me fix it before anybody even knows that there was a problem. And that's how I approached it. But then I came to a point a year in where I shared it with my family. And for several years, they were my community. And it was a precious time. Just like you said, that last year has been precious for you. It was a precious time for me uh, for a different reason, because I was going through a dark valley and I was leaning on my family and they were supporting me and, Mm -hmm. and we were celebrating um, the wait. And if you're in a waiting season, you don't have to be walking through infertility. You can be waiting for God to reveal what college you need to go to or, or what direction you need to take in your life purpose. Like we were talking, you can be waiting Mm -hmm. for a loved one to be healed or for Mm -hmm. your own body to be healed or, or Mm -hmm. for whatever it is that you are in that waiting room of life. I just want to encourage you. God never wastes a waiting season. Yep, and good. it's in, been in the waiting season of my life that he's revealed who he is and who I am in him. Mm. And he's close to us when we're brokenhearted. You know, mm. I can remember clearly moments throughout that eight year journey where his promises were more real to me in my brokenness than they ever were in in my moments where I was celebrating or where I was winning. And those whispers from heaven, those smiles from God that let you know, I'm in this, I'm in the doctor's room with you. I Mm. I am, I am with you at three o'clock in the morning as tears stream down your face. I'm Mm. with you as other people are getting the thing that you've waited for years and years and years for. Mm. I'm with you. And Mm. Jesus being with you in the waiting is, it it really is the treasure. It really is what, what we all seek more than even the thing that we're waiting on. It's the presence of God, like knowing Jesus Mm. is our purpose. And I think him revealing himself and his love in such a real tender way, it made me feel safe and secure. Like it it made me feel like free 
to celebrate mm-hmm. others. It, mm-hmm. it gave me the confidence to get out of my head yeah. and to be able to show up to the baby showers and celebrate wow. others and grab every baby that I saw and hold them close. That wasn't my strength. That mm-hmm. was a strength of God because he says that in our weakest moments, that's when his strength will rest on us. Mm. It, in your weakest moment, the power of God rests on you like never before. But he wow. said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. This is, I'm speaking over you. If, if you're in a weak season, whoever's listening or watching, I'm speaking it over you today. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm. And the scripture goes on to say, therefore I'll boast all the yeah. more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And and the love of God, as I drew close to God in that season, it made me feel so safe and secure that I finally got to a point where I was able to boast. It took me six Come years on. to wow. be honest. That's how long that inner wow. conversation with God was before I could ever share it publicly. I, I was I was speaking all over the world, but people didn't know this inner struggle that I was walking through. Wow. Um, my close friends did. And six years in, I said, okay, I'm boasting about my weakness. I don't have the miracle yet, but the miracle hmm. truly is that God is with me. And that's Come the on. miracle I'm going to celebrate even more than holding a baby in my arms one day. I know wow. that's going to come to pass, but he's faithful in the here and now. And wow. his faithfulness is what I get to celebrate. And mm-hmm. it unlocks something in the heart of freedom. Uh, when we get out of our heads and start focusing on those around us, we go, I'm not waiting for that season. There's beauty and fruitfulness and purpose right here in the wait. Come on. Wow. Oh my gosh, I feel like I just went to church and um, also just sat down with the sweetest friend and got encouraged. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think that revelation that the miracle and the treasure is Jesus in the waiting is something that is actually, you know, I've never put that to words like that. And so thank you for even encouraging me with that today on a personal level. That's so good. And I have to say, everyone listening can hold me accountable to this because I guess we've been doing this for three years now. And I've interviewed so many of my friends and everyone is amazing. But I have never said this before. I think this is my very favorite interview ever just because I am so thankful for the wisdom and the truth that you just spoke. I think so many people are going to be so impacted. I feel like you just hit, you know, touched on so many things that people are walking through every single day. And there's no doubt that this is going to be, you know, a light in the midst of someone's darkness, a truth over the voices of lies that they've been hearing. And so thank you for just pointing us to the truth and to Jesus and loving people so well. DC, you are a gift and I'm so thankful to be your friend and that you I'm said yes. I'm thankful to be your friend. This thank is the you. biggest honor. This is awesome. I love having conversations with you. You shine the light of Jesus in a once in history way and I'm cheering you on every step of the way. Keep going. We're thank all behind you, friend. you. We're celebrating and there's so much more ahead. I can't wait to hold honey. Amen. And I can't wait till we're together next time. I know. Waylon and honey are going to be the cutest friends. I can't wait. <laughs> so get back to Louisiana and let's hang out. <laughs> love I you, will. friend. I love you very much.